we seem to be getting a lot of inquiries about limited recourse borrowing in relation to self-managed super funds. You got any thoughts on why so many people are attracted to limited recourse borrowing and what is it? Yeah, well, well look, there's a lot of press about limited recourse borrowing. It's, it's a bit of a buzz uh, topic out there. Um, and it seems, it seems there's a bit of overkill, I think. Um, limited recourse borrowing is really just like when you buy a, uh, you buy a house, um, or you go to the bank, you lend money based on your earnings, and away you go, you go and buy it. Limited recourse borrowing, part of limited recourse borrowing, means that the bank only has recourse over that asset inside your super fund. So it's a limited form of recourse the bank has over your, your particular asset. So they, they can't touch the other assets, they can't come and start selling up your shares, taking your cash or anything else like that? That's correct. It's, it's within the super environment, but that particular asset's quarantined away from your other assets. So it does, it does have a level of protection there for the consumer. Do you think the benefits of um, asset protection are overlooked with self-managed super? Do, do you think clients generally understand the, the advantage that super provides in relation to asset protection? Look, probably not. I mean, uh, super provides a fantastic environment to hold your assets. Um, and and even the extent if, if things do go bad out in the real world with you, you know, you're going uh, bankrupt or something like that, um, it's very, very difficult to get money or funds or assets back out of super that have been put in there according to super are the super rules or the super legislation. In terms of contributions, the contributions caps are rising. Do you think we'll see people putting more money into super in the future? Yeah, it's hard to tell. The caps have risen from $150,000 to $180,000 for non-concessional and from twenty-five dollars to $30,000 for concessional. Uh, there's also, if you're 49 years or over, from the 30th of June 14, uh, you can put in $35,000 concessional. Um, I think the caps will um, I will stay there for some, some time to come, um, but I think that other days of people putting large monies into super has is, um, is passed. In terms of insurance, um, what are your thoughts on insurance, in or out of super? Well, it depends what type of insurance. Um, life insurance is pretty much a no-brainer. That should be held into super, not just because um, um, it's deductible in, inside super, and that's not always the best way to go to claim that tax deduction, but you can claim a tax deduction in super. But it's really the flexibility um, to pay out to your beneficiaries should you die, or indeed the money can stay inside super and, and pay them out of pension or something like that. So, so super's a really good option to hold life insurance. Um, income protection insurance shouldn't be inside your super, and, and disability or trauma should be a case-by-case -case basis. Quite often we're asked, uh, do we need to have a company as trustee of the super fund? I mean, natural persons at law can act as long as the primary purpose of the fund is to pay a pension. Do you have any thoughts on trustee or natural persons? Yeah, look, absolutely. It's pretty, wi it's pretty widely known in the industry that other uh, corporate trustees the way to go. Often people go with individual trustees for price reasons, but down the track it's a far better option to have a corporate trustee. Probably a couple of the main ones is that, um, is that the corporate trustee has an infinite life and that holds well, that's the owner of the assets. So as members and directors come and go through the fund, there's no need to change who the, who the holder or the owner of the assets are. Whereas if you've got individual trustees and one dies or one moves on or whatever it may be, then you have to go and change the name of all the assets, which, which can be quite onerous. Another good reason is the ATO's new, uh, new powers. They can, they can find, find the trustees of a certain, um, uh, certain thing. So if, if the trustees, um, if there's two, three or four individual trustees and there's a fine of $10,000, that gets levied on each of those four, two or three individual trustees. If it's a corporate trustee, then that fine's levied only once. So that's, a, uh, that's another reasonably good, compelling uh, uh, reason. So if it's really, I mean, what we find is people stick with an individual trustee to start with for price reasons, um, but you only need to receive one fine from the ATO, you know, like a parking fine, yeah. situation and, and, um, and the trustee company pays for itself pretty quickly.